Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are creating our Clash Royale light game, right? And last class, last video, we went here on the unit. Uh, I'm not moving my unit to the right anymore and my unit is choosing a random, a random number between zero and one, right? And this number, if, if it is the number zero, that means that my, that my unit has chosen the top bridge. And if the number is one, that, that means that my unit has chosen the bottom bridge. And then my unit will walk towards this bridge and then later walk towards the enemy castle, right? So here I'm getting a zero or a one and I'm storing inside bridge number. So what I want to do now is I want to say that if my bridge number is equals equals zero, then so Whenever we use only one equal, we are saying that the right part is assigned to the left part. So my bridge number is a random number between zero and two, right? So when we use two equals like this, this is a question. So this is comparing for me if my bridge number is equals to zero. So this is a question, is my bridge number equals zero? If so, then I want to do something. So this something that I want to do is I want my player, my unit to choose the top bridge, right? So here I will need another variable to store the, the chosen bridge and I'll call it a uh, chosen bridge. And I'll say the chosen bridge is equals zero for now. So I haven't chosen any bridge. And if my bridge number that I got here from the random is equal zero, then my chosen bridge will be equals. So now I want to get the top bridge, right? But if I just say top bridge here, it won't work. Because as you can remember here on the game, for us to be able to access the player base from other script, we have to use the game dot. So anything we are gonna access from other scripts, we need to have game dot before the name of the variable, right? So here, top bridge and bottom bridge, I need to be able to access them from other scripts, like we need to access them here on the unit, right? So here on my top bridge and bottom bridge, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add game dot before them. So it's game dot top bridge and game dot top bridge and here game dot bottom bridge and game dot bottom bridge. Okay, now I can access my top bridge and my bottom bridge from other scripts, but instead of top bridge, I can say game.topBridge. So if my bridge number that I got from the random function is zero, then my chosen bridge is gonna be the top bridge inside the game. However, if not, so else means if not. So if my bridge number is zero, I choose the top bridge. If not, so if it's not zero, so I'm getting here a random number between zero and one, right? So if it's not zero, then the only other option is one, right? So if my bridge number is not zero, then it's one. So if it's one, I want my chosen bridge to be the game dot bottom bridge, like that, okay? And then here, after, I will use the print just to check what is inside my chosen bridge. So whenever I create my unit, it will get a random bridge number. It will check what number it got, and then it will assign a bridge to the chosen bridge variable. And then later I'm printing the chosen bridge to see which bridge was assigned, right? So let me play here. I click on my uh, uh, phantom, my ghost card here, and it prints for me pixelpad.bridge object. So that's a bridge object assigned to the chosen bridge. And that's good, right? We have a bridge assigned to the chosen bridge object. Great. So now what we have to do is after choosing the bridge, the ghost has to move towards this bridge, right? It doesn't matter if it's the top bridge or the bottom bridge, my ghost has to walk towards that bridge. Not just my ghost, but my units, right? All my units. So. If it is a movement code, we do it on loop because we want to keep moving again and again. 
So before we had something like this, right? Self dot x equals self dot x plus one, and this will just keep my, uh, will just make my goals to keep moving to the right, right? But if I change this one here to four, for example, I stop and play my game, then my ghost walks faster, right? If I have 10 here, my ghost walks way faster. So all our units will have a speed, right? And I will create a speed variable to store my player's speed. So I can say here that speed is equals to two, for example, right? And then here on the loop tab, if I try to use speed here, you can see that it doesn't know what speed is, even though I have just created the speed. So what's the problem here? The problem is if I just create speed equals two here, it is only accessible, so I can only use this speed variable inside this star tab, if I create my speed variable here. Right? I cannot use it here on the loop tab. So what we could do is we could add game.speed here and we could use game.speed here. That would work, but that's not the best thing to do. Because when I say game.speed, I'm saying that this speed is from the game. This is the speed of the game, the speed inside the game. And this is not the speed inside the game. I don't want to do that. I want this to be the speed inside my unit. I want it to be my unit's speed, not my game's speed, right? So instead of saying game, what I want to do is I want to say self. So my own speed is equals two. This way the unit will have a speed now. So here in the loop tab, I change game to self. So you can see that it's the same thing we do with uh, X here, right? So the X position, if I just use X, X equals X plus self speed, it doesn't work, it doesn't know what X is, but it knows what its own X is, right? So we use self.speed equals two, and then when we press play, I have my ghost moving with the speed of two. So if I choose, if I change there to five, now my ghost moves faster, right? Good. So now what I want to do is, my, my ghost will keep walking to the right, that's fine, but then I want my ghost to walk well, if my bridge is on the top, I want my ghost to walk up. If my bridge is on the bottom, I want my ghost to walk down. So how do I know which direction I have to walk to if I don't know which bridge was stored inside the chosen bridge? So let's say that my ghost is right here, right? This is my ghost. <laughs> Great. So I have two bridges. I have one bridge here at the top and I have one bridge here at the bottom. My ghost will get one of these two bridges randomly and store inside the chosen bridge variable, right? So I don't really know which bridge I have chosen. I just know that I have chosen a bridge. So how can I know if my player has to walk up or to walk down? That's pretty simple. So it doesn't matter which bridge we have chosen. If this bridge has a Y position, so Y again is up and down, right? If this bridge has the Y position greater than my Y position, so let's say my Y position here is zero. The bridge Y position here, uh, let's say is 200. So if my bridge has the Y position greater than my Y position, I have to increase my Y position and that will make my ghost to walk up. If my bridge is down here and it has the position minus 200, then it won't be greater anymore, right? It will be smaller than my own position. So in this case, I have to decrease my position. So I will always check what is the position of the chosen bridge and I will change my Y position to always match the position of the chosen bridge, right? So let's go back there to the code. And here we can say if, so again, uh, I have to access the chosen bridge, right? But the chosen bridge here on the start tab doesn't have a self. So I cannot access it from the, uh, access it from the loop tab. So I will add a self to all my chosen bridges here. So self.chosenBridge. 
self.chosenBridge and self.chosenBridge. I don't have to access bridge number from any other script or any other tab. So I can leave bridge number like this, right? So self.chosenBridge. So if self.chosenBridge.y, so if the y position of my chosen bridge is greater than self.y. So if the y position of the chosen bridge is greater than my own y, what I have to do is I have to increase my y position. So here I'm increasing my x position, right? So to increase my y position is basically the same. Self.y equals self.y plus self.speed. Right? So now let's see if my if my phantom chooses a top bridge, it will walk up, as you could see. If it choose the bottom bridge, it's not walking down yet, but that's what we're gonna do. So here, if it choose, if the chosen bridge y is greater than my y, I keep increasing my y. But if self dot chosen bridge dot y is smaller than my own y then I want to keep decreasing my y. So self dot y equals self dot y minus self dot speed. And let me decrease my speed here to two so we can see better. So when I press play now, I create many goals and some of them choose the top bridge, some of them choose the bottom bridge, right? It's random. So that's working, which is pretty good. So now what I want to do is once my, my ghost has passed the bridge, passed to the, through the bridge, or has crossed the bridge, I want it to turn to the enemy castle and walk towards the enemy castle. Okay, so let me save my game. Let me stop this here. And let me go to my loop tab. So here in the loop tab, we have this code here that makes my, my unit to walk up if my chosen bridge is on top of my enemy and walk uh, of my unit and walk down if my chosen bridge is under my unit, right? But as you can see here, whenever I create my unit, it passes the bridge, then it has to do the same thing for the castle, right? So here, this unit here will have the castle on top of it. So it should know the castle is there and then it should walk up after crossing the bridge. While those units from the top, they will see that the castle is under them and they will have to walk down. So this code we are using for the chosen bridge is actually uh, can, be, can actually be used also for the castle. So one thing that I want to do is I want to change this variable name from chosen bridge to be my target. So the target is where my my uh, my unit is going to walk to, right? So I can say here uh, self dot chosen bridge instead of that I can say self dot target is equal zero. So I'm gonna change all my chosen bridge to target just so we have a better name because it can be a chosen bridge, uh, it can be a bridge or it can be a castle, right? So I don't want to have the chosen bridge as the name of the variable. So the target starts zero and then it gets one number and then it sets the target to be the top bridge if the number is zero, if the number is one, then the target is gonna be the bottom bridge. So I changed the three chosen bridges here for target. And then here on the loop tab, if the target Y is greater than my Y, I increase my Y. And if the target Y is smaller than my Y, then I decrease my Y. Okay, so now you can see that it's still working as it should, right? And what I want to do now is after the enemy, cro after the units cross the bridge, I want it to change the target. I want the target to be the castle now, right? So let me stop the game here. So I keep moving to the right here, right? And then if self.x, so if my own x, so let's go here on sketchpad again. So here we were looking for the y positions, right? So to see if my unit has passed the bridge will be something very similar to this, okay? So here I have my my phantom and my phantom has just crossed the bridge. So here is the bridge position. And let's say that the bridge position on the X axis now, so on the horizontal axis is zero. And my ghost unit, as it has passed the bridge, it's 
x position is something around, let's say, 30. So I can see that 30 is greater than 0, right? 30 is greater than 0. So if my unit has a greater x position than the, the target x or the bridge x, that means that I have passed the bridge already, right? If my x position, if my player position was, let's say, minus 20, so the bridge, uh, the bridge would be on my unit's right position yet, because my bridge here is zero, right? So I haven't crossed the bridge yet. I'm still 20 pixels far from the bridge. So, okay, let's go back to the code. And here, if self.x, so if my own x is greater than my target's x, so if my own x is greater than my target x, that means that my player, my unit, is on the other side. And if my unit is on the other side, it can get a new target. And the new target is going to be, so if my, if my x is greater than the, the target x, then my target, oh, my self.target, my target, is now going to be the enemy base. So enemy base. But here on game, my enemy base don't have a game before it, so I cannot really access it from other scripts. So I'm going to add game dot before the enemy base. So game dot and game dot. So now I can access my enemy base from other scripts, like I can do with the player base, right? So here in the unit loop tab, my target is going to be the game dot enemy base. So I keep walking to the right. Once I have passed through the uh, target's X position, that is the bridge first, right? Then my target will be the enemy base. So let's see. When I press play, I create my player. It walks, passes the X of the bridge, and then it turns to the castle already. So you could see that my, my, uh, my enemy changed its its path once it get it got a little bit more x than the 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 bridge right so my bridge is zero so if my ghost already have like two on the x so it's it hasn't even crossed the river it will turn to my castle but because that's the code we added here right if my x is greater than the bridge x then I go to the castle nice so we're going to fix that on next video. So for now, just save your game and I'll wait for you in the next video. Bye.